Hi, this is Judith Karakson, your Manos Brilakis, and this is case 175 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating potential solutions to the impenetrable proximal cap. The patient had previous coronary bypass and uh, presented with recurrent failure of a saphenous vein graft to the right posterior descending artery. The referral was to recanalize the native coronary artery CTO since the prognosis for the saphenous vein graft did not appear to be very promising. The mid RCA was occluded with heavy calcification and the PDA was filling through the saphenous vein graft to the right coronary artery. Our plan was to first try undergrade wire escalation. If that did not work, do retrograde from the vein graft and if that did not work, do undergrade dissection and reentry. This is how the saphenous vein graft looked at the day of the CTO recanalization. There was a relatively slow flow, but uh, it uh, filled the PDA and then filled the posterior lateral vessel as well. We were able to advance a Sion blue guide wire, but then after this was done, there was a sudden sensation of flow as well as chest discomfort of the patient. And we can see now that the flow is much worse potentially due to embolization going through this very diseased saphenous vein graft. We were able to use a Corsair microcaster and advance a guide wire all the way to the right posterior lateral despite the significant tortuosity. And then after doing that, we performed balloon angioplasty with a 2.5 millimeter balloon. There was a tight lesion in the PDA. After doing that, then Timmy 3 flow was restored into the PDA as well as the right posterior lateral. We now move on to the actual crossing of the CTO. As we had planned, we tried undergrade wire escalation. We placed a workhorse wire into an acute marginal that was originating next to the proximal cap and then used a dual lumen microcatheter in an attempt to penetrate the proximal cap. Despite multiple guide wires, including a Gaia second, there was inability to advance through the very calcific proximal cap. We then used the Gaian X3, a Hornet 14, Confianza Pro 12, Vastato 20, and we actually exchanged for a Corsair microcatheter. But once again, we were unable to cross through the proximal cap. Given the difficulties, we decided to switch to the retrograde approach. So we did use uh, a Corsair XS microcatheter. And then using a Gaia next three wire, we're able to puncture the distal cap. That was also calcified. And then we knuckled a Gladius Mongo guide wire that advanced all the way to the proximal cap. So what we have now is, again, the undergrade microcatheter, the retrograde Corsair excess going through the saphenous vein graft, and then this is the Gladius Mongo that is close to the proximal cap. At this point, we switched again to undergrade attempts because we were unable to further advance the retrograde guide wire, which was actually in the extra plug space, as we can see. We were unable to advance wires. We decided to perform the base or balloon assisted subintimal entry, use the large balloon to create a dissection into the wall of the right coronary artery, and then try to get an extra plug undergrade guide wire. Once again, we used multiple guide wires, but we were unsuccessful in achieving that. We did use uh, the base again. We have an undergrade microcatheter. We're trying to direct the wire into the extra plug space without success. But then eventually, using multiple balloon inflations, we were able to advance a Gladius Mongo undergrade wire next to the retrograde guide wire into the extra plug space. However, our problems were not solved. We were actually unable to advance an undergrade guide extension, even after balloon dilatation of the mid-RCA with 2.0 and 2.5 millimeter balloons. So now the lesion continues to be uncrossable with guide extensions. But then eventually we were able to advance the retrograde Gladius Mongo guide wire into the undergrade guide extension and then all the way into the undergrade guide catheter, advanced the retrograde microcatheter into the 
guide extension and then externalize the NAR350 guide wire. We predilated the entire um, right coronary artery. The balloons uh, seem to expand. And as a result, we decided to stand. So we placed uh, dragalute extends all the way from the PDA into the distal right coronary artery. Then another stand a little more proximal. But uh, there was a lot of difficulty expanding that mid RCA despite multiple balloons. And then that is why we decided to use intravascular lithotripsy. This is a 4.0 millimeter coronary shockwave balloon that was inflated in this area of heavy calcification. After doing that, then the lesion nicely expanded with a 4.0 millimeter balloon. And then we placed additional drag eluting stents all the way from the distal RCA into the proximal right coronary artery. And then there's a final stent all the way to the ostium of the right coronary artery. We perform intravascular ultrasound to check the result, and there was actually good stent expansion and stent strata position throughout the area of the occlusion. And after doing this and restoring flow the, through the native coronary artery, the flow into the saphenous vein graft significantly decreased. We debated about uh, occluding the saphenous vein graft using coils or an unplugged vascular plug but we decided not to because the flow was not very high. So in summary, there were several lessons from this case. The first one is that when a saphenous vein graft fails repeatedly, then chances are it will not remain patent for long. And if it's possible, treating the native coronary artery is the preferred revascularization strategy. We had a highly calcific, impenetrable proximal cap. We could not advance any undergrade guide wire. We eventually got a retrograde wire in the extra plug space, and then we did use extra plug techniques, specifically the base technique or balloon-assisted subintimal entry, to create a dissection in the wall of the vessel proximal to the occlusion and advance a guide wire into the extra plug space. Despite that, there was still difficulty fully expanding that area of the coronary artery, and this is where intravascular lithotripsy was useful in allowance to fully expand that part of the vessel. Thank you.